Hi guys and welcome to today's video. I hope all is well. Starting off this with uh, a voiceover, just kind of going through some posing and showing you exactly what I kind of look like first thing in the morning. Um, I'm, I'm kind of happy where I am at three weeks out. Again, you know, I'm not the biggest individual. I'm like 147 pounds. Um, my goal for my competition prep was to to ensure that I am absolutely peeled. That, that was one goal which me and AJ set out was we, we, we know that I'm not going to be the biggest, of course. Look at the fucking size of me right now. But I, I wanted to ensure that I am peeled, absolutely peeled. So I've achieved that on this prep. Um, just going through some poses here, I, I would love to get some feedback from some individuals who watch, who, who know a little bit about posing and stuff like that. I've never really posed before in my life properly. Um, so any feedback, any critiques that you can give me in the comments, then of course let us know. I'd be greatly, I'd be greatly appreciated. But this is where we're at physique wise, first thing in the morning. Um, three weeks out, 21 days. Happy with, with how I'm looking mainly. Um, glutes are in which is fantastic um, fairly lean midsection is a bit meh um, I'm really trying to improve on my rear shots like this like sitting on my left hamstring is something which I've, I've struggled with um, bringing the separations out but generally I, I practice every single day in my posing twice three times a day if I need be um, practicing like if you look at my left leg like it's nowhere near as good as my right leg in regards to just like sitting on my legs a little bit i like this side tricep look though this looks good um and it's just midsection control as well my midsection is not very good i don't know i don't know what the fuck this voiceover is but i do apologize if it's just me waffling and chatting a load of shit but sit back relax and watch this video what a fuck what the fuck is this voiceover george jesus christ sorry here we go. So you know it's a fanboy moment when you get chained by JP uh, fucking clothing cum. I'm going to show you what I got because I'm sure many of you will like to know sizings, etc. All that type of stuff. So when I do a fucking clothes haul, man, even I'm the worst person ever to do a clothes haul. But this is what we got. Okay, so I love the packaging. I don't know why. It just looks smart. And then you rip it open and you're going to fucking just... Oh, oh, oh. It's not going well, is it, George? You know, you put so much effort in it, just. Come on, you little fucker. Bit of a miserable fucker when it comes to clothing and, and what I've got. Basically, I got a zip up, another zip up. You know, I wear the. I don't even know what colour it is, like light, like grey, is it? Is it grey? I don't even know. So I decided to get myself a black one. I'm the worst person in life for this. Look, I'm gonna have to edit after this shit out. Oh dear. So I decided to get myself a zip up. Fuck, dear, fucking hell, George. There we go, that's much better. I've got size large, I think. I like my kind of clothing, sort of, you know me, I wear the old baggy clothing because I think I'm fucking huge when I'm not huge. But we got a size large in the old Train by JP zip up, black zip up. Fucking hell. I'm terrible at this. Picked up a black, yes it's black again, which I'll try on, which I believe I got an XL hoodie. So I like I like my hoodies a little bit more oversized. Framed by JP hoodie. And that is what it looks like. Bosh. It's in the mirror myself at the moment, so I'm guessing from what it looks like, it looks pretty good. I've got a size XL, if anyone gives a shit. I'm five foot six. Normally, I'm like a size small or medium in clothes, but yeah, I've gone for the oversized baggy stuff, man, because I fucking copied the whole fitness industry. That's probably the worst clothes haul you've probably ever fucking seen. Been watching this guy, Mo Samuels. This geezer's, this geezer's nuts. This geezer is absolutely nuts. Like he's prepping for a body, well, he was prepping for a bodybuilding show. The way he's done it is just like completely, completely polar opposite to what I've done. Not saying that his way, you shouldn't do it his way because you can do your prep however you fucking want. And he's probably actually bigger than me at the end of the day, but it's just crazy how I've been so regimented what I'm doing and he just, this geezer just don't give a fuck. It's great. He actually does make me laugh. So there's a YouTuber you ever want to watch. Type in Mo Samuels because uh, <laughs> I watch his videos and I'm just like oh my fucking god this is completely different to my prep what is going on why is he looking better than me oh it makes me sad sometimes <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Uh, it's disgusting. <laughs> just suck it into your mouth, if that makes sense. And then take it into your mouth. What the fuck's going on? Like, prepping for a show and he's taking a, a toke of a cigarette. <laughs> 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 What is going on? Like for me, I'd be like, I haven't smoked weed in like, I haven't smoked weed in a good four or five months now because I know that I'll get drug tested and uh, if I fail on cannabis, I'd be fucking absolutely pissed off. I mean, cigarettes of course is different. You fucking have like a cigarette like one day out from his show and that. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, it's so like opposite what I'm doing right now, it's crazy. <laughs> So I've put the full workout in the description below if you guys want to try out this particular workout. But in this voiceover, I'm going to kind of highlight a bit of the workout and highlight where I'm at three weeks out from my first ever bodybuilding show. Um, so, of course, three weeks out, just fucking mention that. Don't know why I'm saying this again. This is a little routine kind of warm-up I do at the beginning of my push sessions, if anyone gives a shit. Some front raises, some rotator cuff work, some bicep curls, and uh, I do an isolation uh, movement to kind of get some blood into my chest because I find that my chest is something my muscle connection I, I just don't connect very well with so uh, I like to do a little bit of isolation work but anyway three weeks out as I've said again fucking hell um, calories so I'll, I'll dive into a little bit of my calorie intake so far so on a train day my my calories are roughly just over 3,000 calories right now so we're hitting 450 grams of carbs 50 grams of fat and 225 grams of protein on a non-trained day, we are hitting just over 2,500 calories. Protein is the same. Um, carbohydrate intake is 250 and fats are 70 grams. So essentially, we have a higher fat intake on a, on a rest day because carbohydrates isn't necessarily as needed uh, within a deficit and it allows me to get some more dietary fat in which potentially I wasn't able to get in on my training days because 50 grams of fat isn't, you know, crazy high. Um, so that's a rationale behind that and we're kind of ut utilizing my non-training day as a calorie burning day right now and kind of prioritizing carbohydrates, prioritizing training or maximizing our, our training performance on, on a training day with the higher carbohydrate approach. So reasons behind that is, is pretty clear. Um, my expenditure has changed. So over the past like week or so, my training day uh, steps is at 12,000 per day, which is a 2,000 uh, 2, step increase. And on my non-trained days, I'm hitting 15,000 steps, which is about five five uh, k increase my camera drops here and i nearly one minute i'm waiting for my camera to drop it should slow the geezer walks past here here we go and then it just slowly starts falling and oh my god i nearly fucking broke my camera there i swear to god i was fuming after that because my camera was like the lens was like like stuck like it was jammed i don't know what the fuck was going on so i nearly broke my old camera then that would have been a nightmare three weeks out from a fucking show and i broke my camera but anyway um cardio is still very much the same so i'm doing 30 minutes on the stairmaster on my rest days and my push days i do both of those fasted um you him buttons taken out now, of course, your himbine has been taken out due to just water retention. Uh, get rid of that inflammation because we do know that your himbine, you are more likely to hold on to water. So we're trying to get rid of that water retention, which the fat burners provide. Um, and that that's pretty much it from a cardio, a cardio expenditure, nutrition. And of course, my training split is, is, is a legs push pull off. So I do three days on, one day off. Um, this is a very good movement, by the way. Very good movement. If you want to try uh, try this particular movement out, it's like a line incline kind of side raise. Um, you can use the cuffs. I like using the cuffs, but the handles. I don't know why. I just feel it a lot more better. Um, I kind of retract my scapula. I dig myself into the pad, and I just raise up to the side, and it feels absolutely incredible. Um, so, so try and give this a go. One thing as well, which I, I do. And isolation movements like this, like the pec fly you're seeing right now, is I actually close my eyes and focus on kind of imagining being the muscle, if that makes sense. It sounds weird as fuck, but I generally close my eyes and just imagine what the muscle's feeling like. And I found that my mind muscle connection is so much more better when it when I when I try and do that type of stuff. So if you if you struggle with mind muscle connection, close your eyes and actually think about what the muscle is doing, if that makes sense. Here, what I'm trying to think about is shoulders back, 
chest nice and high. I'm retracting my scapula and I'm staying on the fucking muscles. So as you can see, when it gets really, really hard here and I'm getting to failure, I'm not just throwing the weight. I'm taking the muscle or I'm taking the movement through the range which I can go through because you'll notice that my range of motion starts to kind of diminish towards the end. This is a fantastic variation for a narrow grip um, Smith machine press or a narrow bench press. It's like a narrow dumbbell press. Um, again, I, my the dumbbells come in shoulder width apart instead of like having it, you know, both together. I've seen people like have the dumbbells together towards their chest i don't really know how to explain it if i'm honest with you. i'm fucking rambling chatting a load of shit here but this is a great variation for the for the uh, for the close grip bench press then moved on to like a lying kind of skull crush which i got off from nick hopefully nick is watching this video these felt fantastic uh just felt completely unique and different which i haven't felt in my triceps before so give this particular exercise if you can it looks like i'm on a fucking sun lounger just cruising uh and then we finished off with like a dual kind of single arm press down to failure so really kind of focusing on contracting and getting as much blood in the triceps as possible overall really good workout kind of happy with right where i'm at um three weeks out the reverse diet did its job or the diet break i should say uh, did its job uh, and i'm looking the best best I've ever felt um, or the best I've ever looked as well uh, and I'm happy with things are going so hopefully you enjoyed this voiceover I'll see you in the next clip this is what we're looking like post workout Rainy. So another really, really good session in the old books. What I did is uh, earlier on in the video, I had my camera set up uh, the tripod. It was just, I just wrapped it around the machine, the, the tripod around the machine. And mid set, the camera just went bosh, landed straight on the lens. And then I went to pick up after I finished my set because, of course, you have to finish your set before you know you, you, you look at your damaged camera, which could cost up to you know 500 quid or whatever much my camera was. I think it's roughly about 500 quid. Um, so the set always comes first, especially if you're in prep. And uh, the camera was the, the actual lens was fucking jarred and it wasn't turning on. I was thinking, oh no, I fucked my camera up. I'm like 20 days out or whatever from my first ever show and I fucked my camera up. I, this is the most important time when I need a bloody camera and I don't want to be spending fucking hundreds and hundreds of quids to try and get it sorted because the lenses and stuff like that, if they're damaged, they cost more than the actual camera itself, which is a, it's a fucking madness. And I, I sit there for about 10 minutes trying to actually fucking see if I can fix my camera. And luckily we've just, you know, given it a good old bang like that. Normally you wouldn't do that type of stuff, but I just thought, you know, I'm gonna give it a fucking whack. And it finally worked and hopefully it's still working now and the quality is still very good. So uh, that at the beginning of my session really threw me off annoyingly, but things started to pick up and uh, I luckily got through. Oh dear, that zoom though, bruh. Luckily I got through the rest of the session, which was fantastic. But generally my pressing over this contest prep has taken a little bit of a hit, which of course is gonna be expected. I was looking back at what I was doing before my prep and I was doing like three and a half plates on the uh, incline hammer strength. Now I'm like doing two and a half plates. So uh, there's been quite a drastic drop in performance, which is annoying. But like I said, if you, you need to take into consideration I'm like 25 pounds lighter than what I was. And unfortunately you're not gonna hold on to strength and I've said this so many times within my videos before you're not going to be able to maintain or, or, or hold your strength as well as what you want to especially within your pressing movements so unfortunately my friends you just got to fucking suck it up suck it up and get on with it and just ensure that you are not drastically dropping off in performance because I'm not drastically dropping off I'm just noticing that over time my performance is steadily coming down which is going to be expected other than that my my leg 
like my lower body sessions, my pulling movements, I'm still managing to progress or maintain. Like my deadlift is the best it's ever been. Uh, my, my pendulum squat as well is the best it's ever been. So at the end of the day, I've still made progress over this competition phase. It's just unfortunately that the pressing side of things does take a does take a hit when you're in a calorie deficit. And we know that weight moves weight. Like if someone who's obese, like a fat boy, went to push me, like if he's like it's like a sumo wrestler pushing me, he'd send me fucking flying. That's why fat people, overweight people, you get those people that are quite strong, like they're just generally quite strong. Uh, because they have so much weight behind them, they can move that. So always remember that and don't be disheartened when you have to drop the load in. But other than that, disimposing, um, looking grainy, quite lean, quite vascular, probably the best I've actually ever looked, which is makes me really, really happy because like two weeks ago, I was looking at my physique and I was noticing that we were fading and shitting myself, like, oh my God, have I peaked too early and what's going on? But luckily, decisions made by AJ, which props to the old coach, implemented a diet break at the right time. Now we're kind of reversing. Um, and I'm eating 450 gram of carbs and my physique is just looking so, so much better for it, which is fantastic. So I'm happy and I just want to showcase bodybuilding or natural bodybuilding in the right way because I've said this fucking time and time before, 12 week preps, natural bodybuilding, 12 week preps, no! Unless you're fucking peeled already, then you can do a 12 week prep. But if you're a fat motherfucker, 12 week prep as a natural, no, 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 no. Cheat meals, cheat days, this type of stuff, I mean, each to their own. But don't complain, you know, don't complain about not being in condition because so many people will turn up to their shows and their condition is fucking dreadful. Do not complain about it if you are doing a 12 week prep, having a fucking cheat meal or cheat day every fucking week and can't stick to your diet. I just want to showcase how natural bodybuilding is done in the right way. Like I was watching Nick Wright's um, prep for his his uh, summer shredding and I was just, 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 no, 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 no. But each their own, you do what the fuck you want to do. He's still probably bigger than me at the end of the day, but well, he's still fucking bigger than you. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So we've got to the point of where my Vibrams absolutely stink, so we have to keep them outside. They're not allowed in the house, so they stay outside, smelling like absolute fucking shit. And there's my sister. Hi, Becca. There she's waving. One hour post-workout, I'm always taking the Support Max Neuro. Very good supplement, which I'd recommend you guys taking as cortisol management tool. And I use it for the ashwagandha, uh, for sure. Really, really good supplement. Five grams, post-workout or an hour after you, you, you train, you'll be good to go with this. The daily walk, the daily heal. I do this shit every single day at the moment, and I enjoy it. Uh, I'm actually getting better at it. At first, I used to be fucking really out of breath, kind of draggy up this hill, and I think, fuck me, I do cardio every single day. Well, not cardio every single day, but I do cardio three, four times a week. I should be able to get up this hill quite comfortably. The more you practice something, the better you get it. As I say that now, I'm getting out of breath, because I don't normally speak, and trying to speak is, is quite hard. Have you ever had a conversation with someone and you're trying to breathe and speak whilst doing cardio? Fucking nightmare, I tell you, absolute nightmare. You can already tell why I come up here for the view as well as cardio. I'm chatting shit, just stop. Like that tourist, the Chinese love it. Peaceful. Very, very peaceful. That's why I come up here. At the end of the day, helps me release all the energy that I have, which is not much. I'm out of breath, pretending I'm not out of breath, but I am out of breath. Then the only downside of me walking through these bloody fields is sometimes you approach some cows. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, I nearly got fucking killed by a cow the other day. Little, oh, I don't even know, it was like a bull, I swear, it had fucking horns. He was about to charge at me. I'll put it on the screen now if anyone hasn't seen it. Help me. Okay, yeah, fair mate, fucking hell. Fuck. 
Going for a walk and almost getting killed by a... Yeah, I almost died. A cow was trying to walk past me and obviously I was a little bit nervous because, you know, I'm a skinny little girl right now and this big old beefy cow was looking at me like telling me, right, you're going to get out of my way or and I'm thinking, shit, well, I don't know where to go, mate. And he started fucking like, wagging his head like that. It was a madness. The only downside about walking through a field when it's when it's like this is the bloody cows come out and try and fucking eat you or, or attack you. But other than that, it's nice and peaceful. Nature, man. Oh, we, my God, we fucking love nature. No, seriously, I said this in my last video. It makes you, it, honestly, just walk through a field, see how you feel afterwards. I feel way better than what I would if I walked on a main road or whatever with pollution and shit. Lovely. I'm changing, and I changing in my old age at 22. Fucking hell. Sunday the 14th of July, three weeks out today. Excited, nervous, excited, nervous. I've got my hair French plaited by the way. People are thinking, what the fuck is going on there, George? Hey, uh, we did a practice trial. Well, I've just woken up, of course, it's like my bed hair. But we did a trial run of, uh, I want to get my hair French plaited through the middle when I go on stage, because uh, the goal for me is looking like a Viking. People still ask me, George, you're cutting off the beard. What are you doing with that fucking terrorist looking ISIS beard? I'm keeping the beard, motherfuckers. So if you're watching this and going, oh, fucking hell. I'm keeping the beard. I want to look like a Viking. I want to look like Ragnar, where his name is. Ragnar, fuck knows. So I'm keeping the beard. I've already said that four times, George. And I'm going to do my cardio. It's half six in the morning. Let's just fucking get it. Like I've always said with cardio, the more you sit there dwelling on it, going, oh, I don't want to fucking do it. I don't want to do it. Just get on with it. Get on with it. If you're sitting here now going, I need to go to the fucking gym, need to do my cardio. Seriously, just get on with it. Move it. Get off your fat slob ass and go do your cardio. Uh, positive vibes, man, this morning only. Positive vibes, but let's get this cardio shit over and done with. That's what I say. Look at all these spaces. The gym is just over there. But I decide to park all the way over here. Get those fucking steps in, man. Oh my God. Easy way to get those steps in. Park as far away as you can from the gym. So that shit is all done out the way. Um, I said on my Instagram the other day, just if you go into your cardio session thinking, oh, I can't be bothered to do this. I can't be bothered to do that. The time, I promise you, is going to go a lot slower. Whereas if you just get your head down, just tell yourself, right, I'm just going to crack on with this. Get it over and done with. Listen to a podcast, educate yourself like AJ was speaking this morning saying how he listened to like an audio book and his kind of, uh, you know, self-development time, which a lot of us don't have enough time to do for that day to, due to other commitments and stuff like that. It's an opportunity for you to obviously, of course, improve your fitness, get towards your goal uh, and also kind of learn something new. Like I listen to the Revive Stronger podcast with Jordan Peters on it and I always take one or two things from a podcast, whether it's, you know, self-development, whether it's training, in nutrition or whether it's just life in general I learned something weird I'm getting fucking hippie in this prep and I learning about nature oh, I fucking love nature and learning about self-development and stuff like that but it's so true and, and people why people ask me why I'm in this position right now how I've done what I've done and I'm showcasing what I'm, I'm telling you what I am doing on a regular basis I'm showcasing that so if you can take anything from my videos as well as me trying to be entertainment and, and trying to be funny and you know provide some value you as well really try and kind of invest in into yourself and hopefully with my videos as well you are learning something that you could implement into your life that you can implement into your training nutrition cardio and all that type of good shit so 30 minutes on the stairmaster at level 12 about 400 calories i do about 31 minutes because i like to round up to 400 calories like finishing on like three i think it's like 387 calories i'm like no 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 no, no. i can round that up to 400 so i do an extra minute on the old stairmaster which ain't gonna do too much just yet anyway i hope and then i will do 30 minutes incline walking because my steps on a non-trained day right now are at 15,000, so i do roughly about 30 minutes of incline walking i'll increase it by uh, like the incline by one every single 10 minutes so i start off on level six level seven and level eight 
that's pretty much it. I'll do some ab work. So I do three sets, no, four sets of an ab crunch variation. People still ask me, George, what do you do for your abs? Not much. I just do an ab crunch machine pretty much every session, four, three or four sets. Um, that's pretty much it. And that seems to be working okay. Uh, and then I'll, I'll do a little bit of posing in the studio, just try and hold them up. Because the, the hardest thing about posing is sitting on your legs. Like if you've never posed before, trying to contract your legs for longer than 10 seconds without them not you know being contracted is fucking hard so I do a lot of, I do a lot of that I'm noticing how I'm not stuttering as much this morning which is good I'm not saying um too much which is nice hopefully I don't have to sit here and edit this going um 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 last time that's all I fucking do uh, <laughs> as he says um twat so guys we are three weeks out three weeks out today which I'm very excited for and as always very nervous comment down below cream or e45 if you've watched the whole thing this is cream for my hands because I go on some beds and it makes my skin a little bit dry thought I'd tell you that but thank you for all the support so far thank you for everyone that watches my videos comments all that type of stuff it is greatly appreciated make sure you follow me on the old social medias make sure you keep up to date with what I'm posting and stuff like that because I'm posting quite frequently um, sit back relax and enjoy loads of videos on the channel Anything you guys want to see, of course, let us know. Thank you for all the support, and I'll see you in a bizzle. Sort your motherfucking nut out.